Hey, it's Brian again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program your own basic trading bot using MetaTrader 4 and MQL4. This is a great skill to have in the trading business. Uh, not only can you test and or automate your own trading strategies, but if you're just starting out and looking to make some money to trade with, there are all kinds of people out there that are willing to pay you to build their bots for them. Uh, MetaTrader actually maintains an active website of people looking for freelancers um, that I've linked to in the description of this video. Uh, knowing how to code will surely help you get through this video. The language you know how to code in doesn't matter much as the uh, MQL4 programming language is pretty basic and experience in any other modern language should allow you to, allow you to jump right in. Um, even if you have no programming experience though, feel free to follow along. You can probably pick it up pretty quick. Uh, part two of this series is going to focus on backtesting and you won't need any programming knowledge for that. Uh, once again, a disclaimer, the bot we're building is for demonstration purposes only. Please don't try using this bot for real. It's very simple. It will not make you any money. Um, but let this bot be a starting point for learning how to build bots that will make you a lot of money. Uh, so MetaTrader has a programming language built right into the trading client called MQL4. Uh, we can write MQL4 programs using what they call Meta Editor. There are three types of programs you can make with Meta Editor scripts, indicators, and expert advisors. Today we'll be creating an expert advisor. Um, our simple bot is going to trade based on a currency's moving average. To wrap your mind around how moving averages work, check out my video on moving averages that should pop up on a card here, or you can look in the video's description for a link to it. Um, here's the strategy our bot is going to trade with. When the price on the chart drops below the moving average, we're going to be in a potential buy position. Once the price starts increasing again, we're going to enter into a buy position. Um, also, when the price on the chart rises above the moving average, we're going to be in a potential sell position. When the price turns around and starts dropping, we're going to enter a sell position. One more time, this trading strategy is absolute garbage and will not make you money. Don't trade using it. However, it is simple enough that we can get the code up and running quickly. All right, so we've got the main MetaTrader window um, up and open. I recommend you do all of your development on a test account. I've got uh, one of my real test accounts here. It's connected to the live server, but as you can see, it has almost no money in it. So I uh, highly recommend you do all your development on an account like that. Um, so to get to the meta editor in order to code our bot, you're going to go to Tools. MetaQuotes Language Editor, and that should pop it right up. Here we go. In the top left, you'll see an icon for new, create a new document. Today we're going to be creating an expert advisor. A couple other things you can do are custom indicators and scripts. Uh, scripts are for, uh, they just run one time over the data you have on a chart. Um, custom indicators will draw things on the chart. There are things such as moving averages and stuff like that. Um, an expert advisor can actually uh, enter and exit trades. So that's what we want to do today. Click on next, um, come up with an, a name for this. Yeah, just whatever you want in there. Um, in future videos, we'll get into what some of these event handlers do for now. Just go ahead and click through. And you see it writes all the boilerplate code for you. Um, this is really all you need. It sets up, the, uh, first of all, the properties that we put in on that first dialog box. Um, version number, you can update that if you want as you make changes. Uh, there's a couple uh, functions that it loads automatically for us here. Now, on init, um, just gets run once when the expert advisor is first loaded into the system. Uh, and, and similarly, on dnit is run just once when it's removed from the chart. On tick is where the meat of what we're doing is going to be written. This is called every tick. Um, a tick in MetaTrader is every time the price is updated. So there's potentially you know, several per second. This is not a period. This has nothing to do with whether the chart is set on the four hour charts or the one minute chart. Uh, a tick is every time the price gets updated. So let's run a little test here to see if this is all put together and working correctly. We're going to write basically the hello world 
of bots. So I'm going to write alert, hello world, and that should do the trick. Uh, you'll see what alert does. It kind of it's a good way to see debugging information uh, and things in MetaTrader. So to get this to show up in MetaTrader, we'll simply go ahead and hit compile. It says zero er errors, zero warnings. And it created the youtube.mq4 file, which we can then transfer to our experts folder. And we should be able to see this appear in the uh, expert advisors list now. Yep, here it is. Occasionally, uh, the first time you do it, you'll have to right click on this and say refresh. Um, but once you get it there, it, it should just be there and you should be fine. So let's uh, test this out. Um, in order to use an expert advisor, you simply drag it onto the chart you want to use it on. I said, yes, we do. Okay, that's the stuff we put in there. Click OK. Ah, uh, see on the first tick. All right, um, so the first thing we want to do for our bot is uh, have it calculate a moving average as we go along. Now, uh, luckily for us, uh, luckily for us, MQL4 has a built-in moving average function. We don't have to write that function ourselves. So let's go ahead and add that. The function is called IMA. Uh, and then once you type that, it'll tell you everything you need. So uh, the symbol is, uh, if you put in null, it does the symbol of the current chart. Uh, so putting zero on the time frame means the current time frame. Period for the moving average. Uh, I'm just going to arbitrarily set this to 15. I'll be going into what shift is. Uh, in a future video about uh, more advanced moving average concepts. Uh, for now, just set that to nothing. Um, and then the next variable is the method we want to use the average as in a simple arithmetic uh, moving average or an exponential moving average. We're just going to go simple today. Then the next variable is which price we want to use. Basically, uh, where on the candlestick we want to say is the price of this period. Um, I'll link to my video about candlesticks if you're a little bit, conf a little bit confused about that concept. Um, for now, we're just going to go ahead and put median. Then once again, another shift variable, and boom, we have our moving average. Let's go ahead and display that. And see if this is working as expected. Go ahead and compile. Now we got an error. Why did we get this error? Well, um, moving average undeclared identifier. People using some more modern programming languages may not be familiar with uh, what it means to declare a variable, you have to tell it what type it is, whether it's a, a number or a, a string of characters. Um, in this case, our moving average is going to be a floating point number, but it's actually going to be a, a little bit bigger than that, a double. So um, we can go into more advanced concepts like this in a future video. But for, but for now, just know you have to declare a variable and then assign it. However, MQL4 does allow us to do this in one step if we want. Like that. So now it should compile correctly. So now it should compile correctly. Yep, zero errors, zero warnings. Let's go ahead and put that into our experts. Move and replace. Let's go back to MetaTrader 4. Just to be safe, let's go ahead and refresh this to make sure it gets the newest version. Drag this onto our chart. There you go. Sure enough, it's calculating our moving average as would be expected. The other two numbers we need for our trading strategy are the current price and the price on the previous candlestick. MQL4 makes it very easy to get these numbers. There's a special array called open 
um, that contains all of the previous price data. So let's go ahead and get current price. Now the way this works is the current price is in position zero on the array. One candlestick back is one. Two bars back would be two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we just need to go one back for our, for our strategy. Let's go ahead and put that information out there and compile and see if it works as expected. Yep, as expected. All right, now we just have to put in the, the guts of our trading strategy. So I'll put it in exactly as we defined it. All right, so that's basically the logic of our bot as we defined it at the beginning of this video. The Sermon language M MQL4 has pretty standard if statements. Um, you see, basically we're saying if the current price is above the moving average, but it's lower than the last price, meaning it just turned around and it's starting to go down towards back towards the moving average, we're going to put in a sell order. Or if the current price is beneath the moving average, but it took an uptick and it's starting to go up now, we're gonna place a buy order. So now, finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, how to make the actual sell and buy orders in MQL4. Now, one thing that's important to notice, um, within this on tick function, any of the variables we declare are basically gonna go away after this function is done running. And as we've seen, it got called one, at, one per tick. So if we want variables to persist, from tick to tick, what we need to do is declare them outside the scope of that function. So up here at the top, so if we want to store, say, an order that we create, um, an order number of the order we open, we've got to create that outside this function. Let's put it up here. Now that variable will, will persist outside of these on and it on dinit and on tick functions. So to create our sell order, say order equals order send is the function we want to use for this. Now there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. We're not going to go over it all in detail today. Um, just know that it's basically like you've seen so far. So null once again means on the current symbol. The command will be op sell since we want to enter a sell order. Again, if this were a more sophisticated bot, we'd have to you know, determine what a healthy amount of volume was, things like that. Um, we want to, the price we want to be at the current price. And that's it, that will create an order. As I've said before, this bot, this trading strategy is not very good, so I'm not actually gonna run this and lose my money, um, but you can see how it would be done. Let's go ahead and create what the buy order would be real quick. On this one, the operation would be buy. Now, even if we're not going to run this, let's go ahead and compile it to make sure there's no syntax errors or anything like that. 
zero errors. So we're good to go. Now what order send returns is your order number, which we're, which we're storing in this order number, in this order, in this order variable. So that's it, a very basic bot. Once again, this is not a very good one. Don't run this, you'll lose money. But those are the basics of how to create uh, an MQL4 expert advisor that acts as a bot for trades. Before letting this bot loose in the wild, uh, we're going to want to back test it. MetaTrader 4 allows us to test any scripts, indicators, or expert advisors using historical data to make sure it works as expected. I've got an entire video on back testing in MetaTrader 4, so click somewhere around here to watch that next. See it?